Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. Karen tries to kick me out of my own apartment. After that, don't want to fix my IT issue? Well, I think it's time for a new CTO. And after that, your aura is ugly. We would like a new server. Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen does not get a new server. But this one's aura is ugly. So please smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. Karen tries to kick me out of my own apartment. I'm a 28 year old male and I've been friends with my roommate, 25 female, ever since we were babies. Our families were neighbors and we grew up together. She's like a little sister to me and has always been. After she graduated college, she moved to the same city I currently work in. And since she couldn't find an apartment close enough to where she worked, I told her she could live with me. We had share bills and become roommates. We never really had problems or fights as we've known each other for so long. However, recently things have taken a strange turn. She got involved with someone from her work. The guy seemed to be a nice guy. I only ever spoke to him three times and they usually keep to her room. But he was very friendly and honestly I was happy she found someone who seemed that nice. After a few months of their relationship, she sent me a text saying she needed to talk with me. I figured there might be something wrong with the apartment. It's not uncommon for things to break. But I was wrong. When I got home, we started talking. It's too long to write everything, so I'll just summarize. She told me that while she enjoyed living with me, her boyfriend was starting to get jealous of his woman living with another man. At first, I raised an eyebrow, but thought that this kind of thing isn't uncommon. So I was like, Oh, it's fine. Just let me know when you plan on leaving. Hope you two find a good place. However, apparently I was wrong. She told me that she wasn't leaving. She said that it was impossible to find someone closer to her work and that she was hoping I would let her take the apartment instead since my work wasn't close and all that. Thing is, I really love my place. It's close to the gym, to the grocery store, to pretty much everything. I'm not going to just leave my place because of something so stupid as this and I told her that flat out I was not going to leave. She got visibly upset and started to rant about me being egotistical and a jerk, that I didn't have empathy to put myself in her shoes. This happened a few days ago and she shut herself in her room and only ever leaves to go to work or to pick up her boyfriend, who became really unfriendly to me after that. Now, usually I can be a jerk, but I don't think this was one of those times, so I thought I would ask Reddit for your verdict. Am I really such a jerk? Edit. I didn't expect this to get this much attention. For those who have asked, her name isn't on the lease as I lived in the same place for two years before she moved in. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or his roommate? Please let us know. I'd kick her out ASAP. She reminds me of my younger self. Don't want to fix my IT issue? Well, I think it's time for a new CTO. I just want to state that this IT issue is going to blow some people's minds. The security flaw that this presented was nothing short of incredible, and the fact that we never had a major security breach is astounding. It truly is. The flaw, you may ask? Everyone in the entire company's password was the same password. Yes, folks, you read that right. Every single password to every single employee login was the same password. It was like this before I joined the company and for quite a few years after, until, well, enjoy the story. Now, what about the username? That must have been the trick, right? Oh yeah, that was a trick. The username was the employee email address. I did point out this flaw to my management and their response was, that's not our area to be concerned about. So whatever, it paid well, I'll do my job. And then one day, we had a Windows update, which caused a piece of the software I used to work to break. I submitted a help ticket, and after escalating the issue, I got to the CTO. It wasn't a huge company. The CTO said, I don't want to spend the time fixing this. Use this workaround. To which I pointed out, the workaround slows things down, makes my job harder, and this Windows update has to affect more than just me. I was told to suck it up. Now, at the time, the CEO was the son of the founder and a bit of a jerk. I legit feel at this point in time, he was just collecting a paycheck and letting everything run on auto and didn't pay attention. But I was mad at the CTO for brushing me off, so I pinned an email to the CEO. It was a short email and I simply said, 
I discovered a massive security flaw that could potentially expose us to huge liabilities. When would be a good time to discuss this? The response? What security flaw? I decided to demonstrate the flaw. I picked two random salespeople, I didn't know them. I got their username and I logged into their systems. And I pulled two random customers' personal information. The kind of information that would have easily allowed me to commit identity fraud, pull out credit in their names, etc. All kinds of bad stuff. I emailed the CEO and I explained, anyone who knows the URL to log into our system can log into anyone's account, pull up customers' information, and everyone has the same password. To prove this, I logged into two employees' random accounts and pulled two different customer profiles and I've attached them. One single disgruntled employee could do us over. 25 minutes later, my phone rings. It's the CEO. He was nice, very interested in how I did this. This guy isn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. And I pointed out the flaw in plain English and the liability that it presents to him. I walked him through the process of hacking my own account as he called it. I'd hate to call it hacking because it was easy. Now it dawned on this CEO that this liability was huge. I pointed out again in our conversation a single upset employee could destroy us. The fact that it hadn't happened already was nothing short of a miracle. I get told that they want me to present this to the executive team so they can discuss a solution. Honestly, the solution is obvious. So a day later we have the conference call. It's the CEO, the CTO, COO, CFO, the company lawyer, the senior VP, etc. And on the call, I demonstrate the flaw and I lay out how I, as a lay person with very little IT background, was able to figure this out. It's incredible that we have this flaw. Everyone is in agreement that this is a huge issue, except the CTO. The CTO gets very upset at me and he wants me fired for hacking the system. He says that per our employee handbook, what I did is a fireable offense. I point out that I'm not abusing this loophole and I'm only doing it to expose the flaw because I care about the company and I think this is something that needs to be brought forward. I point out that a former disgruntled employee could log into an account and steal customers' personal information and if that were traced back to us, the liability would be huge. I could tell our corporate attorney agreed with me and he was shocked at what I was demonstrating. The CTO pointed out that former employees' usernames are disabled, to which I pointed out every employee username is their email address. It would be trivial for a former disgruntled employee to use a different employee email address that they remember to log in. And since everyone's password is the same, they don't even have to guess. The CTO points out that we would know who did it because of the IP address. I pointed out that VPNs are indeed a thing. The corporate attorney actually wasn't familiar with what VPNs do and I explained it. And what shocked me is the whole time, the only person in the meeting who didn't agree this flaw needs to be changed was the CTO. The CEO made it clear that this issue would be fixed by the end of business that day and there were no ifs and buts about it. The meeting ended. After the meeting, the CTO called me. Privately, he was mad. I just exposed his incompetence because the system was his design. The decision for everyone to have the same password was his decision and I know why he did it. He did it because he was lazy. And I said to the CTO, you're a crappy CTO. You shouldn't be in the position you are and you're lazy. You should have found a better solution for my help ticket. He stops and asks, so this is about your stupid help ticket? I go, yes, yes it is. He laughs and says he's going to have me fired. And I laugh and go, I'm pretty sure someone is getting fired. I'm also super confident that it's not going to be me. Well, sure enough, later that day, we got an email stating that everyone was to change their passwords to something unique. A week later, the CEO announced the old CTO stepped down to spend more time with his family. On the first day of the new CTO tenure, he sent me an email telling me he wanted to personally work on my help ticket and find a solution around the whole Windows update which I'm pleased to say he did. And I later had conversations with our attorney at a meeting. We legit never had a security breach, which is simply astounding. The attorney admitted that was just plain dumb luck on our part. And if we would have had a security breach, it would have been very bad for us. Your aura is ugly. We would like a new server. Okay, hi friends. Long time server, but my first post in here. I work at an upscale-ish restaurant. We have two floors and last night I was serving upstairs and because of the obvious restrictions and whatnot, 
we only have hosts downstairs. When we are on a wait, the hosts will see when there are open tables upstairs, page the guests and send them up. A server then greets them, sees where the host had pre-planned for them in our system, and we seat them. Now that you know how that works, I'll also just add in here that I am one of the top servers in my restaurant, consistently selling the most every week, and I'm a trainer, so my managers all love and appreciate me and mostly have my back. Okay, so the Karen family is paged that their table is ready. They walk upstairs and stand by the host stand while I finish at my table and make my way over to them. I said, hey guys, how's it going? They just stared at me. Finally, the wife goes, do we just seat ourselves? I, holding a paper cocktail menu and silverware, after walking over to them and feeling like I had just made it clear I was about to seat them, said, nope, that's my job. You guys can follow me this way. They follow to the six top tables and they all take their seats. I slide the silverware I was holding down to everyone individually instead of just setting six silverware on the end of the table for them to hand out. I said our menu is all virtual right now. There is a link on your table. I'll be right back. Come back and ask if they have any questions or if they'd like to get some drinks started. Again, silence. I just pick someone and say, okay, can I grab you something to drink, sir? We don't have what he asks for, but I suggest something similar and he says, okay. The wife asks what beer we have. I said, we have a lot. What do you like to drink? She said, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you what beer you have. I say, we have 27 beers on draft and 19 that are bottles. So if you tell me what you're usually into, I can guide you through what will work for you. She goes, oh God, I'll just have a Bud Light since you can't sell a beer. I, looking stunned, laugh and say, okay. Her husband turns his attention to me and says, are you having a bad night? To which I say, no, sir, are you? And he said, no, we're just trying to have a nice family night and you're rude. You've been rude the whole time and you threw our silverware at us. I'm stunned, so I just say, I definitely did not throw it at you guys. I was just trying to slide it down the table to all of you. Sorry if it came off that way. I'm not having a bad night and I haven't had an attitude. The wife jumps in and says, it all started up front when you said, that's my job. Changes the entire tone I said this in, by the way. And now you've just been rude to all of us this whole experience. We're like five minutes in from them walking up to the stairs at this point. And then she yells so loudly, all my other coworkers hear, Your aura is ugly, and we don't appreciate that. Just send us a new server. It took everything I had, like I mean everything, not to say anything rude back to her. I just said, I'm happy to grab you a new server, and I'll just grab my manager for you too while I'm at it. My manager goes over, knowing everything from my side already, and they tell him I was rude by seating them and making that comment about how they could not seat themselves, when there was no host at the stand, so we just assumed it was pick your own table, and throwing their silverware, and my attitude and aura are just plain ugly. My manager stuck up for me and said I'm actually one of their best, but they still insisted on another server. Imagine being one of the three other servers having already heard and seen this go down and now it's your table. That server made a $6 tip on an $80 ticket by the way. Forget you guys, my aura is shiny. Edit again because people are sus. The bill for the couple I'm talking about after the six top split was $80. So $80 for two people, which is honestly pretty average, so maybe I don't work at the most upscale place, but it's not cheap. Definitely not a $6 tip cheap. Speaking of auras, what color is your aura? Please let us know. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Am I the jerk for refusing to participate in my boyfriend's family's bizarre orange tradition? My boyfriend and I have been together a while now, but I hadn't met his family until a week ago when they invited us to stay at their house. I was very excited to meet his parents for the first time and they were super sweet when I got there. Both of them are lovely people and we all got along well. They gave us free reign to do whatever, but the one thing they insisted on was that we join them for their tradition of eating oranges as a family on Saturday mornings. They grow their own oranges and have been doing this since my boyfriend was a kid, so he was especially thrilled to share the tradition with me as a rite of passage. So the morning came and his mom brought in some fresh oranges from the garden. We sat at the table and I was getting ready to peel my orange when I saw my boyfriend's mom bite into her orange like it was an apple with the peel still on. 
I was so stunned when I saw my boyfriend and his dad do the same thing with their oranges, as if it were totally normal. I guess they noticed my shock because they asked me why I wasn't eating. So I started to peel my orange, but then his mom told me to stop, that I was eating it wrong and had to bite into it with the skin to get the full experience. I politely told her that I like to peel my oranges and I'm sure they taste just as great either way, but she kept insisting that I had to bite into my orange for tradition. After saying multiple times that I'd rather peel it and the family, including my boyfriend, pushing back, I put the orange back on the table and said, though I appreciate the gesture, I'd personally feel uncomfortable eating oranges that way and I'd rather not participate. Things were tense after that and we left the next day. When we got home, my boyfriend chewed me out for being rude and embarrassing him and his family. He said I should have just eaten the orange the right way since his parents were gracious to let me stay with them. I can see his point and I apologized for causing any hurt. I really do like his family and think they're great people, but stand by my decision to opt out of the orange tradition. He feels like I could have compromised and I feel that I should be able to eat things how I want. It's a silly squabble in the grand scheme of things, but my boyfriend and I are really at odds about who's in the wrong and I would love an outside opinion. Edit. Some people have been asking what kind of oranges slash whether they're actually oranges. All I can say is that I was told they were oranges and they looked like typical oranges with thick skin. Edit 2. Lots of frequently asked questions, so I'll just answer them here. No, they don't just bite into it once and make it easier to peel. They don't peel the oranges at all. They eat the whole thing, fruit, skin, and pith, like one would eat an apple. Yes, it is messy. Yes, the skin is thick. The tradition involves eating the entire oranges like that, not just one bite. I do recognize that I could have surrendered a bite to keep the peace. However, this is the first time I've seen my boyfriend eat an orange. He never ate them with me, as he would say that nothing compares to his parents' oranges. He has seen me, our friends, and people in TV shows and movies eat peeled oranges. I assume the same goes for his parents. My boyfriend has never commented before on the common peeling technique. His parents do this every Saturday. I'm not sure how they eat their oranges on other days, but I imagine it's the same. The whole family is expected to participate every Saturday when at the parents' house, and I don't have to do it in my own home. The reason I didn't try one bite is mostly because I was caught so off guard since all my boyfriend had told me was that we were going to eat oranges. He didn't let me know about the method in advance, so I panicked. That and the insistence that I eat the entire fruit the way they wanted me to turned me off of trying it. I might be open to trying it in the future. I think that covers it. Thanks for the comments. I'll definitely share with my boyfriend. Well, what do you think? Is OP the jerk? Or is her boyfriend and his family? Please let us know. I think she's lucky she made it out of there alive, to be honest. This sounds like the beginning of a Stephen King novel. Force me to take two weeks of unpaid time off? Have fun running the place without me. I used to work at this one coffee shop. My first chain coffee shop after working only at local or family run ones. Simply put, it was heck. Owners would micromanage everything without knowing anything about how the business ran, never listened to their staff, and only cared about the money typical out-of-touch owners of a business. I was hired to replace a manager that had walked out on one of their locations, leaving it with only part-time staff. I was told I was being hired on as the acting manager until they either hired someone else or they felt I would be a good fit for the position after my six-month probation. I won't go into everything that went wrong because there's a lot, but to summarize, it was literally heck. I was expected to cover all no-shows which had me working 90 to 100 hours a week. I wasn't allowed to fire anyone no matter how many things they did wrong. Someone actually showed up to work drunk and I still wasn't allowed to fire them. And any changes I wanted to implement were shot down, like replacing old parts in the espresso machine, shortening our hours to save money on labor, bringing in items that customers would always ask for. I was stressed, overworked, and irritated as heck when the owner comes in to talk to me about sales for the store. We weren't making enough to warrant the hours I had scheduled and he wasn't going to pay me any more overtime. I would only work the hours I'm scheduled and if someone no-showed, I had to have someone else cover those shifts. I tried to explain to him that I only came in when no one else would cover. It just so happened that the people he allowed to continue to work here had terrible availability. Making the schedule was already hard enough. Getting someone other than myself to come in on their day off was next to impossible. On top of all that, I had to learn the ropes myself. 
there was no one to train me, so all the managerial knowledge, ordering, scheduling, I learned myself. No one other than me knew how to order coffee, had the numbers for the repair guys, anything other than making coffee and using the till. I was the only one that knew. He wasn't hearing any of it. Owner, all I'm hearing is excuses. This is your store. If you can't handle running it, I'll start looking for someone who will. Me, wasn't that the plan though? It's been three months since my probation period ended and you never gave me the manager position. So I assumed you were looking for someone to take over. Owner, I think it's in your best interest to take some time off. Start thinking about your position here and whether you actually want to start moving up. I had mentioned in the interview I was looking forward to working my way up in the business. Me, I can't. There's no one to cover me. You're taking this time off. Is this a paid break? No, consider this a time out for you to get yourself sorted. Take the two weeks to rest and we'll see what your position will be like when you get back. Me, owner, I can't really afford to take that amount of time off. I can't even take two days off without having to come in and cover. Owner, don't worry about the business right now. It'll run without you. Now, to put into perspective, I was basically the manager at that point. I made the schedules. I did the orders. I knew the codes to the safe and the alarm. I wasn't allowed to hire someone to assist me and no one worked enough time to be able to cover even half of my shifts. I knew this. The staff knew this. Customers knew it. I made sure to block all work numbers and spent those two weeks looking for another job. I managed to find one after a few days that paid significantly more. I sent my resignation email to payroll and the owner, knowing he never checks it, deleted my account off the point of sale system, being a manager means I have access to it from home, and spent the rest of the leave catching up on my well-deserved sleep, having blocked all work numbers. I'm not getting paid, so I'm not working. According to my coworkers, crap started going wrong the next day. One of the openers didn't show and the next staff member didn't have keys. Owner wasn't answering his phone, so they left a message. Owner didn't show up until one of the regulars called asking if the place was closed down. He showed up four hours after they were supposed to open. Orders weren't done, inventory was missed, four no-shows, you name it, it went wrong. Owner tried every way he could to get a hold of me, even using a customer's phone to call me. Too bad I didn't answer any calls that weren't in my contacts already. After two weeks, I turned my phone back on and get a call the same day from the owner. We agreed to meet the next day. Owner so, you've had some time to think. Me, I have. It's really given me perspective on my position here. Owner, we can start you back on your normal hours for now, and we're looking for a manager to take on more of your responsibilities. Me, oh, that's good. I'm actually quitting. He was silent for a few minutes. I think he was waiting to tell him I was kidding. Sucks for you, buddy. I'm serious. Me, I've already emailed payroll and removed my login from the computer. Here are my keys good luck. And I left. Owner tried calling me a few times, but stopped once I told him to check his email. I was on okay terms with some of the staff that worked there, and apparently the majority of them had quit after I had left. Owner did find a replacement pretty quickly, but without anyone to train them, owner didn't know anything about running the business. They were done for from the get-go, and left pretty soon after they were hired. My petty self is always checking reviews from customers and employees and they have consistently sucked for the past year and seem to be on a downward trend over the past year. Edit. Wow, thank you everyone for the awards. I finally got to premium. Now my avatar gets a sweater. This particular job I had was soul crushing and I'm lucky to have a story like this to share with others that have gone through similar things. If someone is dealing with an owner similar to this, I highly recommend brushing up on your knowledge of your local labor laws. There are sadly way too many owners that try to get away with things like this. To clarify a few things, I'm from Canada. Forcing me to take leave was not actually legal of him to do. I was tired and so worn down that I just didn't want to fight anymore. I took it as a gift of all the days off I missed from all the overtime I worked and that was it. For those wondering about whether or not I'm owed overtime, thankfully I'm not. Another manager task I had was organizing hours and submitting them to payroll. Owners didn't have control over that. The managers, along with me, were in charge of that. There was a rule in place where we had to get approval from the person who made the schedules for overtime and that was me. So I got paid my overtime, thank goodness. Even if I did have some money owed, I personally just want to leave it be. It was hard enough getting my last paycheck from them. I didn't want to put any more energy into these guys than I had to.
Have you ever had a boss who had ridiculous demands from you? If so, what did you do about it? Please let us know. I can't believe how you expect me to listen to you read these stories every day. I need a smoothie. Am I the jerk for trying to get my girls interested in my hobbies and interests instead of getting into theirs? I have two girls, 13 and 10, with my wife of 9 years. My girls are typical girls and don't have a lot of interests in common with me. I tried from a young age to get them interested in things we could share. They just never got interested. I'm talking things like video games, science fiction and fantasy books, Star Wars, Iron Man, Batman, etc. These are all popular things that I see a lot of other parents getting into with their kids. They're more interested in things I just can't relate to. The 13-year-old is into fashion, clothes, makeup, hair, all of that. The younger one really likes animals and Jojo. I've tried to be interested in their things. We watched this really bad, campy TV show called One Day at a Time, but I didn't like it and found the writing bad and they got mad at me when I would laugh. The older one likes the show Riverdale, which I admit was a little more interesting, but it was all a bunch of gossipy teen stuff. I just hit a wall. I couldn't figure out why I was going through all this effort to spend time with them when they obviously don't care enough to be interested in things I care about either. I tried to sit down with them and watch Mandalorian and they didn't like it. That really hurt me. Like, really, really hurt me. I know kids aren't going to be your own reflection staring back at you, but I thought I'd at least be able to share the things I love with them. I thought we'd get to spend time together instead of being one of those fractured families with no interest in each other. I told my wife that I was sick of feeling like an outsider in my own family and that I'd like if we could maybe do some designated time that we would do things I liked too. I suggested we could all sit down and learn to play this board game I like, Settlers of Catan. My wife told me that I needed to stop trying to force my stuff down their throat and find a balance somehow. I told her that this is the balance. I can't pretend to be interested in things like gossipy TV dramas, soap operas, etc. when that just isn't me. I'm not a teenage girl. I can't pretend to be one. Am I the jerk? I feel lonely in my own family. Well, what do you think? Is OP the jerk or not? Please let us know. Oh, I can't wait to read what our listeners think about this one. Am I the jerk for asking my friend to remove her post showing she cleaned my condo? I have a chronic illness that often leaves me fatigued and in pain. Combined with diagnosed depression from this chronic illness and past trauma, at times I am unmotivated to shower, clean my condo, etc. I know it sounds gross, but unless you've been there, you won't understand. I do attend therapy and try to find the motivation slash energy, but once every few months, things get disastrous. I live alone, so it all falls on me. I have a cleaning person that comes in once a month, but she will come more if I ask her. All of this makes me feel vulnerable, and I try to hide this part of my illness from my friends. One friend, however, I ended up venting to. Said I felt gross, but literally could not leave bed without feeling exhausted. I said I was going to schedule my cleaning person to come, but my friend insisted on coming over herself. I offered to pay her what I do the service, but she refused. I did end up ordering us takeout as I wanted to compensate her in some form. She cleaned my kitchen, organized my living room, and did a load of laundry. I thanked her immensely more than once. Later that night, I checked Facebook and see said friend had posted before and after shots of my condo, saying, this is what a good friend does. They spend their day off helping a friend in a bad spot. She didn't tag me, but we have mostly mutual friends, all of whom know my condo. I have a one-of-a-kind sculpture that pretty much spells out it was me. There were also comments from others that did mention my name. I felt humiliated that more people had seen my condo at its worst. I already felt horrible having my friends see it in such a state and it took a lot to open up. I texted her and asked her to remove the post. She asked why and I explained what I just said, stating about a million more times I was grateful. She got mad and said that it's her social media and that she can do what she wants. I started getting really upset and frustrated and told her that I wish I had never told her. I ended up crying, reporting the post and going to sleep. The next morning it was taken down and my friend had texted me saying she was never going to help me again. A lot of our friends have sided with her, saying I'm ungrateful and over emotional. Was I a jerk? Well, what do you think? Is OP the jerk or is their friend? Please let us know. That friend doesn't sound like much of a friend to be honest. I'd cut them out ASAP and I really hope OP feels better. And huge thank you to Sub to PewDiePie for our newest iTunes review. Yay! Thanks for uploading again, Pog. 
Come leave us a review on iTunes and you might see it in a video. And huge thank you to our newest supporter on Patreon, Sharice Carter. Thank you so much for supporting our channel. Join as a channel member today and we'll give you a special shout out in our next video. And to have us make any kind of video you'd like us to, just come visit us on Fiverr. Link pinned in the comments below.